Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I wanted to make a video for you just to kind of break down one of the most common terms and one of the most common features in the modern data engineering stack, um, which is a enterprise data warehouse. Um, and so, because I feel like the idea of an enterprise data warehouse is kind of a fuzzy thing, there's not really too much of a clear definition. I wanted you to, or wanted to give you kind of a framework for understanding, hey, what is it, what makes a database enterprise data warehouse? What are some of the components attached to it? And also a framework for whether or not you actually need an enterprise data warehouse. Um, a lot of common use cases could be fixed or could be accommodated with just a relatively simpler, uh, just database setup with some other components built on top of it yourself rather than a full enterprise data warehouse. Um, so I'm just gonna first go through what a data warehouse is, what it looks like, and then get, move on in the framework of uh, assessing your need for a data warehouse. And so at its most base level, a data warehouse is a centralized repository designed to store integrated data from multiple sources. Uh, these could be things like your CRMs, your ERPs, other smaller SQL or NoSQL databases like a Mongo database. Could be things like IoT devices. Maybe you're collecting information from your robots on a factory floor. Maybe it's social media. Maybe it's your ad reports coming in from Facebook or even just spreadsheets or flat files just indicating how your know, monthly sales did within a given month. A data warehouse is really designed to take all that information, store it in an organized way that can then enable analytical reporting, structured or ad hoc queries, and then also power decision-making pipelines like BI tools, reporting tools, business applications, whether you need to present reports to executives or for even just factory managers right on the floor to understand, hey, how are my IoT devices performing? Or I need them to do for maintenance. Um, and unlike databases that are designed purely for transactional processing, uh, data warehouses are designed for query and analysis. So instead of just collecting all your data in rows, they're really designed in a specific structure to make querying using SQL uh, and then analyzing the data uh, much more uh, streamlined once you have that initial structure set up. So it makes them really ideal for business intelligence applications. Now, you'll notice here that even though we have many of these different data sources coming in, uh, there is a staging area where we're actually aggregating that disparate data into a common format and structure. Um, and so this is for a couple different reasons. Uh, number one is allowing you to support historical analysis and insights across a time. So taking you know this day's segment of IoT information and then adding it to a collated uh, database of IoT information historically. Um, but also this process through the staging area collates all these different types of data into one uniform structure, uh, which then enables queries across various different types of data. So it allows you to relate what's happening on your social media page with how many customers you might be ingesting in your CRM within a given week. Um, and by defining kind of everything you need within this enterprise data warehouse and how these relationships are formed, you're able to enable those kind of higher level or sorry, lower level, deeper insights into how different pieces of data across the company might impact each other, which then can then uncover even more uh, insights once you get into your BI tools, reporting tools, where you can really visualize, understand, you know, how all this different data relates to each other. Um, and this all happens and it's all built upon a multi-dimensional data model. If you're interested in knowing how to build data models, check out my other videos on that. Um, and it also uses a ELT pro ETL process to consolidate data from different sources, to cleanse it, and then store it uh, in a way that's optimized for retrieval. So you'll notice it goes from ELT, ETL, so that initial uh, transformation of the data within the store staging area. So transforming it to kind of that common structure and then loading that standardized, normalized data into your data warehouse. Then within your data warehouse, you might do things like ELT workflows where you have already extracted the data from these sources and now that they're loaded into your data warehouses, now you're going to transform them through some additional co computations or analysis queries on the data now that actually lives within your data warehouse because you have it all in one easy to use location. And it's also relatively cheap to uh, run these types of queries within a uh, data warehouse versus, uh, you know, in that staging area or even within the source application. Now, some of the core benefits of a data warehouse are number one is improved decision making. Uh, by having access to this historical data from many different sources, many different data warehouses, you're enabling your business to perform more comprehensive analyses, um, which leads to more informed decision making because you're able to bring all this disparate data together and use it to power a decision. So you're not powering a decision based off of just a very small subset of your data that might not actually indicate or predict the entire uh, picture. Additionally, 
uh, you have data quality and consistency. When you're building these standardized processes to clean and standardize your data, you're implicitly improving your data quality and also providing consistent data across the organization. If you have one common structure for all your data, you can look, someone from any part of the organization can look at data from another part of the organization related to theirs uh, and then generate insights from that standardized data. Uh, you also have time and resource efficiency. Uh, by centralizing your data into a single location, you can save a lot of time and resources by limiting that need to access multiple systems for information. You know, if you had your CRM data saved in a different database from your social media data, if you wanted to do any kind of analysis involving the two, you'd have to pull data from both of those sources into, let's say, a staging database and then run your analysis there, just introducing a ton of extra, you know, friction and also reducing the likelihood that you're going to be able to generate this kind of on the fly insights into how that data relates to each other. Uh, and then finally, you also have enhanced business intelligence. Uh, with data warehousing, you know, organizations can really use BI tools like Tableau, like SciSense to perform complex analyses, uh, such as trend analysis, forecasting, data mining, ML and AI workflows, where you're actually using uh, machine learning models to process and understand this data and generate insights for you, uh, all of which are really, I would say, almost imperative to the modern business for strategic planning and generating good plans for how the future of how you want your business to run. So now that you understand what a data warehouse is and what are some of the things it's used for and some of the benefits, I want to talk about when you need a data warehouse, um, because this is an also equally important question. Um, so the framework I want to give you has five points. Um, number one is data complexity and volume. If your organization is handling large amounts of data from many different sources, uh, a data warehouse gives you a kind of unified platform for organized data storage and analysis. However, if you're primarily working with data from a single source, or you only have two sources that you can just kind of co-locate in a you know, SQL database, you probably don't need a data warehouse. Data warehouses really kind of cut shine when you have lots of different sources, you need to have a relatively complex schema and how you want to relate all of that different data together. Um, and if you're just pulling data from like one or two sources and then running some basic analysis on it, you likely don't need all the extra complexity that a data warehouse introduces. Um, but once you are at that scale, if you have you know, many different sources of data, uh, many different ways that you want to kind of slice and dice and analyze it, that's where a data warehouse uh, can be, come in handy. Second one is your reporting and analysis needs. Um, so organizations that really require complex reporting, historical analysis, predictive analytics will benefit a lot from the structured environment of a data warehouse. If you're generating reports ad hoc like once a month or you're not really doing a ton of reporting outside of you know maybe a single source or just looking at your monthly sales trends uh, you might not need a data warehouse to power those uh, you know maybe you just use a kind of built-in analytics dashboard in the service that you're actually monitoring um, so if you're just using a single service don't really need it but once again you're bringing in many different sources of data and you need to have complex reporting you need to be doing things like predictive analytics you need to do historical analysis a data warehouse will give you the horsepower needed to power those use cases. Next, we have our third piece of the framework, which is performance requirements. Um, so here, if your real-time operational systems are slowed down by analytical queries, a data warehouse can help offload some of these tasks and improve your performance across your systems. Um, and this means that if you are trying to run data or you're trying to run an analytics queries on an existing database, but it's taking you know half hour to run through all those different SQL operations, uh, you might be better served setting up a schema and a structured data warehouse uh, so you can run those queries much faster, much more efficiently, and also take advantage of the increased compute that you can assign to a particular query so that even more complex queries can be uh, process much faster and slow down kind of that time where you're just waiting around for an answer to arrive. Um, but, you know, if you're able to execute your queries right now uh, in less than five seconds, you're probably all good. And the next piece of this framework, uh, our fourth, is going to be data governance and security. So if you're an organization that really needs to prioritize data governance, you really need to prioritize security there, uh, data warehouses can really help you define that control, secure access to data, Many of them offer RBAC controls on top of the actual data warehouse. Uh, you can also help define some security actually within the schema and only give users access to certain tables um, to kind of go off of the least privileged access control model to make sure that no one has access to information that they shouldn't. 
Um, and this also helps you ensure compliance with regulatory regulations, internal policies, especially if you're in a highly regulated industry like, you know, uh, finance or healthcare. Um, and then finally, and the kind of the piece de resistance of this framework is scalability. If you're anticipating to, you know, constantly be growing in data volume or analysis needs, and you're just at the very start of your data journey, but you know that you're going to maybe 10 X the amount of data that you need to process within a couple months, uh, setting up a data warehouse early when you're actually not using a ton of your data, uh, can help you kind of get ahead of the curve there and eliminate a lot of headache downstream when now you have to wrangle 20 sources together into a schema, uh, all at once, if you have a data warehouse that you start out with and you know, okay, I'm gonna have to progressively add more pieces of data in here. Uh, and then it's just a matter of adjusting that existing schema or added, adding new schemas into that data warehouse. Um, and so investing in a data warehouse early can help provide you that scalability required to meet future demands um, and just make it also a lot less burdensome to have to, you know, maybe stop all your work with a data engineer just to set up a data warehouse when 10 months down the line, you're dealing with 10 times the amount of data. Um, and those are kind of the five pieces that I think are really critical to consider when you're deciding whether or not you want to invest in a data warehouse. So just to kind of summarize, you know, data warehouses really play a critical role in today's data-driven decision-making. Uh, they offer a centralized platform for to data analysis and reporting and provide organizations with the tools necessary to glean insights from their data, allowing them to make more informed decisions. Uh, however, the decision to implement a data warehouse shouldn't be taken super lightly. It really requires a thorough assessment of your data management needs, your performance requirements, and also your expectations of future growth. Um, if you follow this outline framework, uh, you should be able to make a well-informed decision on whether or not a data warehouse aligns with your strategic goals and operational requirements, uh, and really just give you the tools you need to navigate this brand new age of data. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video, and above all else, have a good rest of your day. Data Guy out.